Today's message comes from 2 Timothy 3.16. This is the word of God. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. This is the word of God. Uh, I am going over uh, in a series of knowing God that I talked about the love of God, joy of God, glory of God, and so on today. And Lord willing, next Sunday, I will speak about Word of God. I couldn't fit everything in one Sunday, so I split it in two. So today, and Lord willing, next Sunday, I will speak about the Word of God in two different focuses. Um, Today, let me begin with this. Our God is God who speaks. Now think about the implication of this. Our God is God who speaks. It means that He is not just an impersonal, some universal force that's floating out there. It means He's a personal being. As a personal being and eternal being, He speaks from all eternity within Himself. Among the persons of the Trinity, He speaks, He communicates. And we speak as a man only after him because we are created in the image of God. That's why we speak. It also means that God did not withdraw himself from the world he created, but he communicates to his creatures from the highest order of the angels to the lowest man. He speaks about who he is, what he is like, and his will. And this God did not hide himself, but he reveals. He reveals himself. Our God is God who speaks. And as soon as you open the Bible and the beginning of the Bible, that's the reality that you will encounter, that he speaks. He spoke into the nothingness and created things into existence by speaking. His word is not like our words. It's not like the words of man. It is not merely an information communicating noise. It is not merely some sound wave traveling through the air. His word is powerful. And it accomplish, always accomplish His will in this universe. Isaiah 55 verse 10 says this, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, and making it brought, bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So rain never returned to the air without watering the ground so that it may happen. Just like that. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish the which I propose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. His word goes out from his mouth, never return to him empty. It never fails what he meant to do, what he had in his mind. When he said, let there be light and light happened. When he speaks to a dead man, live, and the person come alive. When he speaks to an infant in the mother's womb, come out, and the baby is born into the world with a loud cry. He said, and it happens. He said his will will be accomplished, whatever he purposed. So his word is a truth. That's the difference from our words. He's not a man. He does not speak in vain. He does not speak in empty way. And the scripture clearly tells us that God cannot lie. God cannot lie. So his word is fully trustworthy. His word is powerful and active, never fail, never has any degree of falsehood in it. His word carries his power, carries his own authority, carries the truth. Now think about that. This morning what I'm saying is this. This holy, the most holy and transcendent God 
spoke to a man in history. Now, when I say transcendent, it means he is supremely higher, greater, infinitely higher than everything else. He's not like anything in this creation. He's infinitely distinguished, different in his being or what he is, who he is. Everything else is in this universe is created. We have a beginning. We are made out of something. We are finite. We are limited. That's, we are every, even the angels and everything. But God alone is eternal. God alone is infinite. God alone is almighty, omnipotent. God alone has no beginning. He is not composed by some things. He is simple in his essence. God alone, he alone and nothing else is omnipresence. He is everywhere. God alone is omniscience. He knows all things. No creatures, no created things, nothing is like him. He alone is independent, need nothing. He alone is self-sufficient. Everything else, we need something. We are dependent on him. He's transcendent being. God, this God does not speak English as his mother tongue. He does not speak Hebrew or the Greek of the original Bible as his native language. These are human languages God created. And what do you mean that God eternally speaks within the person of Trinity? What do you mean God speaks to a man? in the time and the space which he created. So he broke into the time in history, in a space, in a human being, in a human language, he spoke. The transcendent being, eternal being, gave his eternal word. That's what we are talking about in various ways and many times. This eternal transcendent God broke into a time and space and spoke to a man. He did not hide himself. Hebrew 1 verse 1 and 2 says, Long ago and many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. He did. Verse 2 says, But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. By the Son. By sending the Son. So long ago, God spoke to prophets and made the prophets to write down His Word. Now in the last days, last days, God spoke through His Son and His disciple apostles to write down His Word. Yes, man wrote the Bible. Man wrote the Bible. But this book claims to be the words of the eternal and transcendent God given to us in time and space in human language. Eternal word of God in a book. In a book. Hebrew 4.12 says this, For the word of God is, is, is living and active. Not once was, not used to be. It is still living. It is still active. Living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. And it still does that today to us. Because this is not a dead book, but this is living and active. It fulfills God's purpose, not only a long time ago, but even today. Brothers and sisters, as you listen to it, and as you read it, He still works through this book. He still speaks through this so that you may know him, who he is, that you may love him and cherish him, understand him, fear him, love him, worship him, desire him, treasure him. Oh, yes, for us to be his. 
He still speaks today. Understand, church, so the value of the Bible. One of the babies crying, I can hear that. I don't know whose mom is needed. If they need help, they will probably contact us. Don't worry. Let me say this. Understand the value of the Bible that you're holding in your hand. He, here in this book, he still speaks. Today. When you turn to it, when you read it, when you listen to it, he still speaks to you. God has given to you the transcendental word in a transcendental way. That being said, I want to lay down some of the things that what we believe about the scripture here in this church. I want to nail that down first. You with me? Please pay attention. This is, this is what we believe about the Bible according to what it claims to be about itself. One, inspiration of the scripture. Every part of the Bible is written by human authors. Yet all of them, not some, but all part of the scripture are inspired by God. That's what we believe. Just like we read this morning in 2 Timothy 3.16, the main verse we read, it says, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scripture, not only some part of this, all of them. No portion of the prophecy, no portion of the word is produced by a man, but as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit, as Peter said. These are all inspired. Secondly, we believe in the inerrancy of the scripture. That the Bible affirms no falsehood of any sort. That is, it is without fault or error in all that it teaches in its original language. They, it has no error in it. No falsehood in it, in all that it teaches. Thirdly, infallibility of the scripture. We believe the Bible is completely, therefore, trustworthy as a guide to salvation and to the life of faith, and it will not fail to accomplish its purpose. The Bible will not, God's word will not fail to accomplish his purpose. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, not even the iota, not even the dot will fade away until heaven and earth fade away. Not single. John 10, 35, Jesus said, the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. Therefore, we believe in the, number four, the authority of the scripture. The power that the Bible possesses, having been issued from God. Why the Bible has authority? Because it is issued from God for which it ought to be believed and obeyed. We must believe and obey. Carries God's authority. Five, we believe in the necessity of the scripture. Mankind need for God's special revelation in the scripture in order to obtain Knowledge of the gospel and plan of salvation. Looking at the sky and the trees and the rocks in this world will not give you, even though it tells us about God for all things, manifest God's glory and power and wisdom, but it will not tell you about the gospel, how you can be saved. It will not tell you about the will of God. This is necessary. We need it. There's a need of the Bible for all fallen human beings. Seven. Lastly, let me say this. Perspicuity or the clarity of the scripture. What is necessary to know and believe. What you and I, we need to know and believe regarding life and salvation is so clearly, clearly profounded and open in some place of the scripture or the other that anyone may understand them. It is not in some sort of puzzle. It's not in some sort of secret code that we need to solve it. No, the Bible's message, what we need to believe and know about salvation, about God and His will is clearly written here. You don't need a doctorate degree to understand the Bible. You don't need a master's degree. 
You don't need to go to some Bible college in order to understand the Bible. Even a child can understand the Bible in its main message, what we clearly must know and understand and believe. It's clear. And if you come to any portion of the scripture that is confusing, and what does it mean? You want more than the scripture interprets itself. Just read furthermore. The meaning of the portion A of the scripture is explained by the portion B and C, other part of the Bible. Bible interprets itself. I don't need any other some special revelation of vision or dream, so supernatural experience or some prophecy to un- in order to understand the Bible. Brother, sister, let me say this. I'm, I'm preaching to you. I'm sharing the word of God every Sunday, but not because I got some special wisdom and some special higher secret access that you don't have. Only I have. That is not the reason why. It's not be simply because I went to church. Come on. I didn't get any vision what to preach about for today. I didn't hear any voice past week what to say today. I didn't have any special dream, revelatory dream to interpret the Bible. You don't need that. It's, it's supernatural experience to understand what it says here. To know about salvation, to know about the will of God, who He is, is clearly written. Clarity. All that we need to know, all that we need to believe and obey is in the Bible. So please do not turn to anything else. Oh, some, somebody said they have some special prophecy. Somebody said they got some new dreams and visions, and you got to experience that to know God's will. No, the Bible is the only authoritative ground for Christian faith and practice. In other words, Christian, what you need to believe and practice, what you need to do. No other no new apostles of a generation, of our generation. No, we are now waiting for Pope in the Roman Catholic Church to teach us about God's will towards us. This is enough, sufficient, and clear. That's the Reformed belief. That's what we believe here in this church. In the last days, God spoke to us by His Son and wrote it down through His disciples, apostles, period. But, Billy, the world is going crazy. Look at what's going on in this world with all the things that are happening. Don't we need some new special revelation that God's speaking to us in a new way? We, we, you know, feeding to our context. Don't we need it? There's a huge mistake right there. One is that you are thinking that the Bible can't, God cannot speak through the Bible today. No. He has told us everything that we need to know and believe until the end of the world, until the crisis returns, already here. He has told us everything. This is what's going to happen, what you to expect. Revelation 22, towards the end of the Bible, he tells us this. I warn everyone, I warn everyone, who hear the word of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of this book, of, the pro- of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life in his holy city, which are described in this book. No addition is needed. No subtraction is needed. If one speaks as if God cannot speak through this Bible today to us so that we need some other form of revelation, special experience, extraordinary measure. Like, if anybody claims that, one, listen to them. They are basically saying, whenever they claim that they are saying that, I got it. God spoke to me. I have some special, extraordinary measure of God's revelation, so you listen to me. They're trying to say that. No, that's 
foolish, that's a lie. God's eternal word is given to us in time and space, in a human language, in a book. Yet this is still living and active in transcendental way he has given to us, and he still speaks here. Don't you think that God cannot speak through the Bible today? It is, as we read, 2 Timothy 3.16, this book is profitable. Profitable for you, for your teaching, reproof, correction, and training you into righteousness. All that you need to grow in godliness. Matthew 5.18, Jesus said there, I, uh, earlier I mentioned, Truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until it is, all is accomplished. Here Jesus said the scripture is valid, effective. Until when? Until when? Until the heaven and earth fade away. Until the end of the world. Until Christ's return, this is valid. It will accomplish all its purpose among God's people. Church, God is not silent in your life. God is not silent in this generation. He speaks. And when we emphasize Bible as God's living and active word, we are crushing down every ideas or claims that, oh, you know what? God doesn't speak anymore. Nor, God cannot speak to us that much in the Bible. Or, treating this Bible as some old-fashioned, outdated, some portion of this Bible is not valid anymore. Wrong. This is the eternal word of God in a changing world. So this is my main point applying to you. This is the eternal word of God in a changing world, whatever generation we live. This is the eternal God speak. Therefore, you must trust, submit, and obey His word. You must trust it. Submit to it and obey it. First Corinthians 1.18 says this, For the word, word, word of the cross. What well, doesn't he just say that for the gospel of crucifixion? Because he it says the word of the cross, the gospel, is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For because it is written, written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Now, verse 18 right there. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. In the Greek Language, the original language, this is the word, the folly is probably the word that you already know. This is how you read it, moron. The word of God, the word, the gospel is moron, stupid to the world who are perishing. But to us, it is. Each, every generation to God's people, this is the power of God. His word is the power of God. Paul, and then referring to, because what he is written to the past of his days, the point to the past, what has been written in the past is still valid. That explains his current situation. That is, has impact today and still is. We see and we hear many crisis of our days all over the world, right? Especially these days we feel like, oh, what's going on with the world? Starting with COVID-19 and other diseases, 
I heard this week on, on the news in Orange County now, th they found that we have this West Nile virus mosquito in Orange County, right? And we had, you, you probably heard this again and again every single day about Mount Fire all over the California and Oregon, and to the point the smoke was so bad that we, sun looked like a red, turning red. We just had an earthquake last Friday night. You felt that? Right? And we have the hurricane in the south part of the U.S. Flood. China has other disease spread over 3,000 people due to using the old vaccine. In Russia, I saw a video clip of news. The small, tiny insect bugs filling the streets and houses and on people's hair and clothes to the point the streets are filled with these insects. They look like sand, sand all over. And the wise of the world who are educated and smart in this world dismiss what is written here, think this is stupid, this is irrelevant, and has no meaning at all. And the wise of the world says, you know what, all these things is due to the climate issue. And their suggestion is this. If we, we can work on the fix the global warming, then we can solve this. This will not happen. I mean, okay. That will save us, but the Bible doesn't think so, because this won't stop, this will not go away. As the day of Jesus Christ, his return end of the world is approaching near, these kinds of crises will happen again and again and more. Difficulties and pains crisis will happen again and again and more. And the Bible says it's like a pregnant woman in a labor. Its frequency and the intensity of the pain will increase, not decrease, it will increase. And all your mummies, you, you know, it's more painful. And in between the contraction, there's a, some peaceful, some relief time. But again, and again, and it, this pain intensity increase, and the frequency gets more and more and more and more, until, boom, the sun appears. Then the Son of God appears. And this will happen. The wise dismiss the gospel of Jesus. No, not relevant. What we can do, whatever in this world, that will save the world. That will save us. No, you need to know it will not save us. He has told you already what we need to know about this world, what we can expect, what during this time, what we can hope for, what we can hold on to, what will come for us about God's sovereignty, His rule, His provision, His love. He already told you everything that we need to know in this book. And only way of salvation and hope is that Jesus Christ, His word, His gospel. He will come and renew all things. What is written here is our only hope. It says, in the last days, people will be a lovers of self. People will be a lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. There will be more sexual corruptions. There will be more and more people disobedient to their parents, more lovers of money, more lack of patience, more abusive, brutal, reckless, more, more of those, and that is exactly what we see, isn't it? You see? This word is profitable for teaching you, reproof, correction, and training you in righteousness. Yes, it does rebuke us. This is the truth. This is not something we can compromise. The eternal word of God doesn't submit to your opinion, your view. You submit to his word. 
if you think or say the otherwise, unlike what Bible teaches us, this Bible rebukes you. If your worldview is not corresponding to the word, it corrects you, bringing Christians to repentance and conviction. That's what we said it is good for, reproof, correction, and training you in righteousness. If you are a Christian, in other words, if I say a student of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus, then trust and submit your master's teaching, his word. Colossians 2, 8, it says, see to it, watch out, be careful. That's what it means. See to it. Then no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirit of the world, and not according to Christ. And the world is like, you know what, it's okay. That you are not being captive to them, what they say. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought, every thought captive to obey Christ. Take your thought to captive obey Christ. The world sees themselves so wise. They see the Bible so stupid, outdated. So they raise a lofty, puffed up opinion, their view against God's word. But you, Christians, you know better. Because God has revealed himself to you about his power, his wisdom, his goodness. Do you trust his wisdom that he's wiser than you? Do you trust that his goodness? Do you trust his power? Then take every thought of yours captive to obey Christ. Many so-called modern-day church or self-claimed Christians, they made a terrible mistake by doing the opposite of that. Instead of taking their thoughts to captive to God's word, they follow the word, the world, and dismiss some portion of the Bible. It's not valid anymore in this generation. Now. And there are many, especially some controversial and sensitive topics of what people say. And the church is now saying different messages. Such as, I can give you, there are a lot. But, you know, I've talked about this many times on this pulpit before. I am not picking just this, but, you know, just people, even in the church, Christian circle, people are debating. Such as, oh, you know what, we, our church support LGBTQ. It's okay, that's not sin. We accept. Or, we deny the male eldership, male pastorship in a church setting. Brother and sister, you read Bible, Bible is clear. There's no hidden meaning. Clarity of the Bible. Homosexuality is sin, and it is. I'm sorry, it, it is. Okay, take back. I'm not sorry. It is abomination to God but we have mercy on those. Let me point this out. You read this scripture, and I hope you can clearly see what I'm trying to say here. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it says this, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither sexual immoral, nor idolater, nor adulterer, nor men who practice homosexuality, or nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The clarity of the Bible. There's no sacred things. Isn't it clear what he's saying? It's you. That is wrong. God does not tolerate that. I don't need any other special revelation to understand this. But look at verse 11 there. And such were some of you. And Paul is saying to according to church, some of you were homosexual. Some of you were just like that. And then he goes, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. That once you were like that, you are now forgiven. 
You believe and repent in Jesus. You are washed. You are sanctified. You are treasured by God as His treasured possession. You're good. If we say to follow the word, the pattern of the world, and ignoring the scripture, and say, you know what? It is okay that we are taking away the gospel opportunity for them to know the way of life, to know Jesus, to know how they can be washed, sanctified, and be saved. We are taking that opportunity of the gospel from them. Yet at the same time, on the other hand, so we are not at the one extreme. It's like, oh, that is not wrong. That is okay. No, that or, or the other side. It's like, oh, the homosexual, oh, all the sins, oh, oh, taking, them, treating them as a lesser human. Let's get, you have no hope. Go away. Don't come here. That is wrong. Because Paul clearly puts, puts right here. Some of you were just like it. Yet you came and believed and repent and watched, accepted, renewed. And we should go come. Repent and believe in Jesus. You have hope. You have hope. Be my brother. Be my sister. I'll tell you the way of life. So with other topics, abortion, or anything else so-called controversial in this world, your view on marriage your view on relationship, money, work, parenting, or anything else. Let every thought of yours, let every opinion of yours be taken captive to obey Christ. Let me end with this. My friends, all my friends who are listening to this, let it be clear to you. John 8, verse 43, there Jesus said, why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you see that? Because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Huh? Because I say the truth, that's the reason why they don't believe? Which one of you convict me of sin? I'll tell the truth. Why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears. Whoever is of God hears the word of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Jesus, you don't believe because I tell you the truth and you don't believe. Then what do we do? We tell them lies to get more people? To get approval from people? Jesus says, I tell the truth and because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. Why don't they believe in the truth? Jesus here says, because you belong to the devil. You are buying the lies of the devil. The devil is a liar from the beginning. And giving you lies and you are buying those lies because that fits your desires. And verse 47 there, Jesus says, whoever is of God hears the words of God. His people hear his word. His people trust his word, love his word, Submit to his word and obey his word. To you. To you. Do you strive to submit and trust and obey his word? So that he may teach you, reprove, correct, and train you to righteousness. Where you stand, I'm done. Where you stand with his word shows you where you stand with God. Where you stand with His Word shows you where you stand with God. And next Sunday, Lord willing, I'll share about how the Word of God help us to grow. How the Word of God help us to grow. Sanctification. Let's pray together. Mm-hmm.